this is what I needed to know before I took them out of ABA. Um, and it's what I couldn't know. And it's what basically the pandemic gave me a chance to see because I was too afraid. I was afraid to take them out and give them their spot because this probably isn't the last time I'm going to be talking about the subject. In fact, I'm sure it's not because I already have another video planned. But today I want to talk about ABA and the last time I talked about it, I was less sure of our decision. I mean, I'm sure of it, but we were closer to the time where we had just made the decision to pull our girls out of ABA. Maggie had been in ABA for six years and Tessie had been in ABA for half of her life. I guess Maggie had been in it for more than half of her life. Maggie had been in it since she was three, from three to nine and a half. And Tessie had been in it from 20 months to almost four. I started having my doubts, as I explained in my other video, about ABA a while before pulling our girls out of it. And part of that was that when ABA was recommended for Patrick, and even before James, James hasn't been diagnosed yet, it was pretty strongly being recommended for him in the event that he is diagnosed. And I just sort of had this knee-jerk reaction of, no way. <laughs> And when I started looking at that, that reaction in myself, I was sitting there thinking, why had I been so gung-ho about getting Tessie into ABA as early as I could? And yet why was I feeling so hesitant about putting Sadie or Patrick or James into it? And that was because I knew the impact of really focusing on masking on a deep level in my own life and how it's affected my mental health over the years. I don't want that to be pushed on them. Then when I extended that to Maggie and Tessie, I had to start asking myself, why was I okay with that for Maggie and Tessie? And when I asked myself that question, then I became more willing to look at what the autistic people around me had been saying about ABA. Whereas before I had just always been no, no, our girls are in the good kind of ABA because I knew that RBCBAs were good people. They, they are good people who care still, I'm sure, about our girls. They're nice people. They think they're doing really good work. RBTs that have worked with our kids are wonderful people, which was, I think for me, it was part of what made it hard to see the problem that I have with the underlying philosophy of ABA because everybody who I knew who was involved with it was so good, so nice, so kind. And the problem I have is with this flaw that I now can see in the philosophy because if I see this as being applied to myself, my childhood, now that I have a diagnosis, it would upset me. And by listening more closely to the people who've actually gone through these types of therapy, I couldn't deny any longer that we needed to make other choices for our family. But I was still really scared because it was what everybody around me recommended. It was what our doctors told us was best. It made it sound like it was the only choice that we had. Everyone had always made it sound like it was the only choice that we had. And I'd gotten so much praise for fighting so hard for Tessie and it was the right thing. Everyone said it was the right thing. And now my gut was telling me it wasn't the right thing. It hadn't been the right thing all along. So that was hard. And that was why, in one way, the timing of the pandemic and when everything shut down, it gave me a chance to see what my girls were like without ABA. And I needed to see that. I was so scared giving up their places. And when we were told that we had two weeks off, I thought, okay, two weeks. And I didn't want it to, I, I didn't want to go back after two weeks. I wanted it to be longer. And then it was longer when they said it was for the rest of the year. First, the rest, first when they said it was for the rest of the month, I was like, yes, I get a month to decide. But by the time two weeks were over, I knew I made the decision. And when a month was over, I got an email about all of the things they were putting in place to go back. And when I got that email, I typed up my own email and I sent it out and I said, um, thank you for everything, but my girls will not be returning. It was so scary sending that. But the thing that I really wanna talk about today is the changes that we've seen in our girls since they've been out of ABA. Because maybe this is what someone needs to hear. This is what I needed to know before I took them out of ABA. Um, and it's what I couldn't know, and it's what basically the pandemic gave me a chance to see 
because I was too afraid. I was afraid to take them out and give them their spot because I was afraid that taking them out was going to do something to hurt them because it was what everyone else said. But I was talking to my own doctor yesterday and when I brought up ABA, he said, well, it's not really that it's the best thing, it's that it's the only thing. It's all that we have and that's why so many doctors push it. And so this is what we have seen since our girls have been out of ABA. And I'm going to talk about Tessie first because hers is much, much smaller. For Tessie, it's just that she has a lot more energy. She probably had a bumpier time transitioning to being home. Mostly Tessie seemed frustrated at first at being home all the time. Although Tessie was always the one that was less excited about going to school. She would always cheer when we turned right to go to speech and OT and she would cry a lot when we turned left to go to her school, even though she always seemed very excited to see her behavioral techs. Um, which made me feel good that she'd be excited to see them and that she'd run over and hug them. I did notice that she was always way happier when we were going to speech and OT. Tessie, she kind of cycled through different ways of getting in trouble at home. Um, like from, she went through like a biting week and just different ways of getting into things. And then in the last month, I would say she's just really kind of calmed down and kind of settled into her little place in our family and it's it's been good and I think part of that is that she was always so tired before when she would get home she would just come home and go to sleep it was like we never saw her and so now it's like we're getting to know Tessie for the first time since she was two and that's been really nice and she kind of had to figure out the dynamic with her siblings who she only really saw on weekends when she was really wiped out from being at school all day all week I think with Tessie, it was it was just really a matter of kind of learning how to be home. Now with Maggie, it was entirely different, and Maggie is really the reason I'm making this video. With Maggie, I noticed real changes almost immediately. By the end of the first week, she was talking more, drastically more. We noticed that she was talking, and you've probably, if you're regularly here watching these videos, you may have noticed it too. She was just saying things and she started telling us that she didn't want to go back to school. Even when I brought up going to school, like going to the school here, going to Patrick and James's school, she would say about the and I was just bringing it up as a possibility because we don't even know if that's possible. I said maybe someday you can go to school here and she would be because things have changed with her so much, I thought maybe that would be a possibility. And she was like, no, no, no school, no, um, no bus, no school. She is, she is really against all things school now. And I can't really blame her at this point. But yeah, the first thing we saw was that she was talking more. I would say that the next thing we saw was most of her negative, what you would call behaviors, um, pretty much vanished. I've said, I know I've said before here that behavior is communication and I think that a lot of the behavior that was negative that was going on was probably probably had to do with stress with this stress with ABA. Most of the behavior that I saw with her was around when we were going to and from school which was also part of the reason I was starting to get concerned pretty much any behavior that I would wish not to see disappeared. And probably the biggest piece of that is that we were working with Maggie on not eloping for the last, what, six years? Basically her whole entire life, but especially since she started ABA when she was three. That was probably our main goal in every single meeting that we had was focused on her eloping and her not eloping. And there was a night a couple months ago when I told Paul that I felt like Maggie wanted to be home so much with our family now that I didn't think that she would elope if she got out. And he was like, yeah, let's never test that though. And I said, yeah, of course. And then the next day, there were a lot of people coming in and out of our house and building supplies were going in. And it was really crazy. The kids, three of the kids were going to my mom's house and it was chaotic. And I thought that Maggie was in the house while they were building, bringing building supplies in through the backyard. And apparently she had slipped out back. Someone thought that she couldn't lift this very heavy bar that was on the back fence, but the while they were bringing supplies in, the lock wasn't actually closed and she managed to slip out through the gate. And I did not share this when it happened, but she was outside of our yard for five minutes by herself 
And in the past, every time she's ever gotten out of her yard, she took off running and headed for the highway, headed to town. Um, it was very scary. And at this time, I was giving the kids medicines to go to grandma's house. We were all inside the kitchen, and I thought Maggie was in the living room watching TV. I had no idea that she had slipped outside where the work was going on. No one had noticed her go out the back gate. She didn't run this time. She apparently, my car was unlocked, which it never is, and she went over. She got in my car, leaving the door open. She sat down and she started drinking Capri Suns and looking at DVDs and she sat there until my dad realized that she was outside and went and got her and she hopped up and happily walked inside holding a couple of DVDs in her hand. And yeah, she thought she'd had a pretty great adventure and she had stayed within five feet of our house the whole entire time. So I'm not saying that we've solved the eloping problem, but I can say that it seems like her desire to get out has greatly decreased and um, she used to always want to go out and want to be away and now every day she asks for reassurance that we aren't going out, that she's, she asks, um, she asks that she's not going to school every day, every morning. Um, and then she'll ask me that we're not going to Lansing, which is where her school was. And then she'll ask me if we're driving in the car, which most days we aren't, because we only drive in the car like maybe one day a week. At most, we don't really go anywhere anymore. And she's pretty happy with that situation. The other big thing that I would say that has happened is that when Maggie started ABA, she stopped playing with Sadie. Before that, her and Sadie had all these games that they played together. Um, they were always holding hands and spinning and just playing. They're best friends and sisters. And when Maggie started ABA, she very quickly became very upset by this cough that Sadie had. And Sadie's asthmatic. She often has bronchiospasms and coughs and Sadie Maggie would just cry, and she stopped wanting to be even in the same room with Sadie. This was within probably six months of starting ABA. It was heartbreaking because they were best friends, and then they weren't, and they stopped playing together. I'd say around the second month of her being out of ABA, all of a sudden I see that she's going over and sitting next to Sadie and hanging out with her again. And it had never once occurred to me that it somehow had to do with her starting ABA and Sadie not being an ABA, and probably the pressure of um, ABA and it amplifying her sensory processing disorder and her hearing, um, auditory sensory processing sensitivities, and um, I don't know, maybe a little bit of jealousy that her sister wasn't in it too. I didn't have to deal with it, but all of a sudden the girls are hanging out more, and that to me is probably the best part of this whole entire thing. Well, among other things, just how much less stressed she is and how all of my kids are playing together now instead of one of them ignoring the other ones because she's so tired. She'd ask to go to bed and she'd go up to her room at 6.30 when she was in ABA and now she stays up till 9 playing with the other kids. It's just, it's good. It's so good. It's changed everything. And I've changed too because I was just always taught, you know, ignore, ignore the bad behaviors and reinforce the good ones, which felt like a good thing to do, but now when she's upset, instead I ask her why she's upset and, and why she's doing that instead of just ignoring the bad behavior, and usually she can tell me and everything's changing, everything's better. We do still have bad days, but I don't think we've had a bad day in a month now. Um, every once in a while we'll have a day that's really, really tough. They're getting to be less and less, and I think that's really amazing. I still have regrets, but I don't think with everything that told me that this was the right method that I would have made a different choice when I look back because, of course, I believed that it was. It was what everyone said, and it was I, I, I didn't know anything. Parents who have kids who are newly diagnosed need better options. We absolutely are thankful for OTs and speech therapists who take more natural approaches, who aren't into the whole ABA thing. And that's honestly where I would tell people to start. Anyways, 
yeah, I'm sure there's other stuff I'm leaving out because it just feels like everything has changed. So much has happened. I'm sure I'm repeating myself. Number one complaint videos, you repeat yourself too much. <laughs> it's the ADHD. I over explain. I can't help myself. That's it. When we started, I just want to say that when we started ABA, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world because she was more compliant. She was learning to bottle it all up and push everything down and be obedient and compliant and Tessie did too but over time there was there's a cost to that and it's just it's not worth it it's not it's not how humans should be treated if you look up I can't remember who the BCBA is who goes to chicken school who talks about going to chicken school and ch chicken training um, it's just this is not how humans should be learning and we need to do better for our autistic children Anyways, that's it for today. If you like this video, we'd love it if you'd give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in all things autism, we'd love it if you'd hit subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.